choose to go to the moon in this decade, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. It's the height of the Cold War. Why we want to go forward to the moon. Well, the lunar surface is very fascinated by different regions and different areas. We are entering a very different stage of exploration. So Jeff Bezos and Blue Origins, they, they want to set up a human settlement. And that's not really follow. History in the making once again for China. China has successfully landed an unmanned spacecraft on the moon's surface. It's the first attempt by any nation to retrieve lunar samples since the 1970s. The spacecraft could then stay in orbit for a few days, waiting for an optimal window to return to Earth. This is quite a complicated vehicle. It's the first automated rendezvous in lunar orbit. Every time Apollo did it, there were people at the controls. When Luna 24 went to the moon, it was a much simpler design. It returned 170 grams of material. We're all extremely excited by this success. Two countries have attempted soft landings in the last couple of years, Israel and India, and unfortunately they haven't been successful. It's not trivial to be able to land on the moon, but China has successfully done this three times, maneuvered about 100 meters looking around for a safe landing site with autonomous essentially targeting it then lets you do that and so it's really hard. It's landing in the uh, ocean storms near a volcanic feature drilling up material that will allow us for the first time really to look at you know what volcanism on the moon is like. Up until now we really haven't had a chance to you know to drill in like that so this will just add to the body of knowledge. Clearly the moon really is a record of our childhood on the earth. Uh, the record is gone on the earth because of the erosion and recycling, etc. And if we want to know where we're going as a planet Earth, we need to know where we've been. And these samples being brought back will actually be fitting into those missing chapters of Earth history. The scientific importance is that uh, they can always do with more materials to analyze, and um, they're going to be from, um, yes, more different uh, areas as well. So the Chinese targeting has been great. It's absolutely fantastic to be able to get these samples back. Focus is shifting from fundamental science, like figuring out when the volcanism happened, to how can you extract materials from the moon to support human living 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So this is called in-situ resource utilization. It will be recognized as a good preparation for the future potential man missions. The second golden age of space is upon us. Space is the ultimate frontier. Dozens of nations are looking to the stars. Exploring the boundless universe is a shared dream of mankind. In the aerospace field, sharing has never been easy. In 1994, China applied to join the US-led International Space Station program, but was rejected on the ground of prevention of the spread of spatial technology. Later, the U.S. introduced the law that bans any satellites containing American parts from being launched by China. However, China's progress in the aerospace field didn't stagnate. In 2003, it secured a major breakthrough when it became the third country in the world to send a human into space. Ten years later, China hit another milestone, successfully landing an unpiloted spacecraft on the moon it was the first soft landing since the Soviet Union's success in 1976. More Chinese cheers in January 2019 in a global first, a lunar probe touching down on the far side of the moon. In May 2018, China announced the formal opening of its space station. China's 
said it was open to space cooperation with all nations, including the United States, and would reserve payload on its space station for foreign projects and astronauts. I see several areas in which it should be improved. It is necessary to bring political decisions that need to say that in piloted space missions, we will go together with China. Space exploration, it's like a global activity and it's we should be undertaking as a global community. There's so much to do, it's, it's such a broad undertaking and it's going to be so expensive and there's so much to learn that there's just no way that, that any one country can do it by itself. I would like to see more, more collaboration between China and the US and between all, all the nations of the world in space exploration. China's becoming a comprehensive space power. It's doing so on the back of its wider modernization of its economy and military and infrastructure. And space is part of modern economic and, and military development. So that is sort of its, its entirely normal behavior. China Aerospace has undergone a tremendous change as developed, and that is the use of spatial resources to develop the national economy. According to statistics, among over 1,100 new materials in China, over 80% are created with the help of aerospace technology. Over 2,000 aerospace technological achievements are applied to different fields of the national economy. Satellite communication and navigation, weather forecast, disaster prevention and reduction, and food production, etc., all of which are closely connected to aerospace science and technology. I think all this development will be to satisfy market, to consumers' needs. And the consumer needs is, are things that they need for the normal daily life. I think this is, uh, is the future for new space, and, uh, and China, I think, is uh, very well prepared for this new space. China developing its space systems of all kinds according to its own timetables and is not rushing about it either. It's taking its time to do it right. So when we talk about China's space program, it's important to think of it as exploration. If this is successful, then targeting towards the polar regions uh, to look for volatiles and then ultimately with human exploration uh, by Chinese taikonauts uh, towards the end of this decade and into the next decade. 50 years from now, we will remember days like this when we made some incremental progress towards this goal and this will become very normal. Once you have an equitable way to go to the moon, everything will change. I wish that the team has fun in the process <laughs> and the public has, has fun in the process. The biggest joy here is the joy of scientific discovery.